The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. As always, we come to you at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So what do we have happening? Well... Yeah, we got a lot of the action out yesterday. Uh, my guess is that we probably had a lot of people short the market. Uh, absent any new news, we'll probably have a small bias to the upside uh, before the close. We're up one point on the S&P cash now. NASDAQ's off 10, Dow's up 8, Russell's off uh, 12 and a half. Uh, got a, a few things that are kind of making, uh, probably took that five points off the market earlier today, and that is that uh, uh, Vice President Pence was recalled to the White House on some kind of emergency, and so everybody's looking for some meaning in it, especially on a f uh, new moon when uh, we like to uh, do our military operations because guess what? There's no light. So uh, uh, are they doing that? Um, I've got a secondary theory. I think the theory now is that there's some kind of action uh, for Iran. I think that action might be somewhere else, uh, maybe a good diversion. Uh, and maybe even the uh, discussion, what was it, a week ago Friday, um, was uh, a, an effort, maybe even today, an effort uh, to find leaks and traders uh, that would uh, uh, telegraph our intentions around the world. So is it real? Is it Memorex? Uh, who knows? Uh, but uh, market, eh, I wouldn't, you know, not responding to anything huge. Uh, 2965 on the S&P cash, about where uh, my model actually says it should be. And uh, I don't think there's a lot more you can say about it. When we look at the uh, uh, volume, uh, we're doing about 3.6 billion shares on the CBOE consolidated tape, so kind of light. But you should expect light uh, going into a week like this where really it's going to be, well, you close early tomorrow. You got Thursday off and probably a ghost team in on Friday uh, for the Wall Street. Uh, again, this is... Uh, uh, you can already see the the uh, not the weather report the uh, traffic report uh, up there in uh, New York uh, jamming up out to the Hamptons uh, and the helicopter is getting uh, on it big. Everybody's going to make a seven six or seven day move out of this. So a lot of people looking the other way, and uh, always a good time to either do something or not do something. But uh, we shall know probably in a day or so. Um, Anything else really happening? Just that kind of little hint of maybe some military action. Um, of course, the Israelis uh, have a policy since uh, Begin in the 80s uh, when they went and blew up the uh, power stations, nuclear power stations. Um, and, of course, they blew one up in Syria and in uh, Iran, bo or Iraq, both. Uh, and uh, they basically said, uh, we can't let anybody have nuclear weapons. So the question is, uh, do we just lend them some moral support? Uh, or there's there something bigger going on out there? And I, I think that's, you know, there's going to be a kind of an instant reaction if something happens. And probably a little bit higher if nothing happens. Uh, but is it going to change the world? Uh, probably not. Uh, history says that most of these minor recursions uh, roll over fairly quickly. So uh, what else do we have? That's it, a uh, little bit. Uh, no real earnings coming out, no real uh, Fed speech for a little while, just a very, very quiet handful of days. But at that same time, this is where you should be ready to act, but probably not act. I think a lot of people leave and uh, 
lot of times that's when the action happens when no one's expecting it or you're out of place. Uh, I will be not out of place, but I won't be in place. Uh, today is my last show through next week. I'll be back Tuesday or Wednesday, uh, so we shall know. All the uh, newsletters will, of course, come as regular uh, editions. Nothing changes on that. Uh, since I have a, uh, a uh, sat phone and a sat internet connection, I can go anywhere I want and be always connected. It's just maybe not as engaged, but again, you got to take a vacation sometime. Market's always moving. You got to take a little rest. So this is probably the best time uh, for me to take a rest because uh, probably the least amount of people uh, listening to the shows and uh, it doesn't ever change on whether or not you can make some money. But again, a lot of people that are subscribers to my newsletters will be out of place and they can't trade either. So always a good time to go. But if you're there, if there's an opportunity, I will pounce on it like a tiger. Like, a, like an ocelot. That'd be it. Give me a call at 877-927-6648. You can always email me at path at tfnn.com. And of course, you can always put a message in the den. Uh, do, do, do. Yes. Okay. Uh, what else is going Oh, we want to do a little history. And then we want to move on and do some uh, charts. We got a lot of stuff to look at. Don't go away. You, you'll be missed. Then it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1937, a Lockheed Electra aircraft carrying American aviator Amelia Earhart and navigator Frederick No. Newhan is reported missing near Howland Island in the Pacific. The pair were attempting to fly around the world when they lost their bearings during the most challenging leg of the global journey. Uh, Lay New Guinea to Howland Island, a uh, tiny island, 2,227 nautical miles away in the center of the Pacific Ocean. Of course, a lot of people, uh, big conspiracy theory. Um, well, probably doesn't need to be. Uh, that was uh, probably the extent of the uh, plane's ability to navigate. And uh, not only that, um, why she was the first uh, female pilot, she apparently had lots of problems uh, and uh, could have been a much better pilot for most of the people at, uh, during the time. Of course, uh, fairly early in the aviation world, but... Uh, more than a few people said that she had, uh, I think she cracked up a few planes, uh, some other stuff. She may have been the first trailblazer, but uh, th there's an old saying, and that is, there are old pilots and there are bold pilots, but few old, bold pilots. And, uh, you know, you're out there in the middle of the ocean. Everything looks the same. Sometimes your equipment doesn't work perfectly. Literally everything had to go perfect uh, for her to hit that island. And not surprising, it did not. Didn't have a lot of backups, didn't have uh, uh, ships uh, that she could count on to land close if she needed a ditch. On this day in 1937, a giant conspiracy theory started over Billy Earhart. Be back in a minute. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Don't miss the last chance to sign up for the TAS Profile Scanner at just $97 a month. Starting July 1st, we're raising the price to $197 a month. This is your last chance to lock in the $97 rate for as long as you remain a subscriber. And as always, new subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk. Don't miss this last chance to sign up at the low rate of just $97 a month. Sign up for the TAS Profile Scanner today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And uh, we got a lot going on here. Let's turn that back up so I can hear myself. Uh, what else have we got? Now, that's about it for the snooze. Let's go ahead and look at some charts. Uh, I had uh, a lot of stocks testing previous highs. We want to take a quick look uh, at this. Of course, uh, Apple up on very, very light energy off this uh, June 3rd low down to 170.26. Certainly looks to me uh, as weak as this has come back up to 200, that this is probably at best in a trading range without some news. Uh, and of course, uh, why there is some stuff going on in it, it just doesn't seem that strong. And one of the weakest back-to-back uh, -back legs from the highs to the lows, and of course, as a big hunk of the NASDAQ, could be a problem, not yet. Uh, in tech land, since I won't be around Friday, we won't have a Tech Insider hour, uh, NVIDIA did launch a a new version of its video card series uh, that's a fairly nice deal for uh, PC owners if they're looking for high-end video cards. Uh, basically, what they did was uh, really uh, kind of accelerate the current crop they have uh, and add some memory and charge about 50 bucks more for them, and they're calling them the Super Editions. Uh, not a lot of marketing weight went behind that, but the uh, 26, uh, you know, uh, 20, yeah, 60, 20, 70, and 2080 super editions. Uh, but, uh, you know, some pretty amazing technology for the price point. I think the most expensive one is about 700 bucks, uh, but certainly uh, much more bang for the buck than the previous versions that they are discontinuing. Um, a little bit of that spike yesterday may have been with that news leaking. Everybody went to sell it off. But again, uh, the sell-off today on fairly light volume of uh, under 7 million shares compared to the 17, almost 18 million shares yesterday on the way up. Let's take a quick look at the SMHs, see if anything's going on in those. Uh, do, 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 okay. Um, as we talked about, there were these big gaps that the SMHs were going into yesterday, and that was a, uh, well, a gap up, gap down 
that goes back to May 6th. That had about uh, 6.8 million shares yesterday. You got into it with 9 million shares, suggesting that even though it rolled over, that you get at least one more test of the 115.96 uh, uh, from yesterday. So even though we're back a little bit, I could see maybe even before the end of the day, I think a lot of people uh, saw that news earlier on Pence and decided short early. And probably not a lot of move to the upside, but I do expect those people that went short to probably blink like they did yesterday at the close. Um, generally, when the shorts quit shorting is when the top of the market comes in. We haven't, I haven't really seen anything that looks like that. Aircap Holdings, AER is the symbol on this one, uh, pierced the previous May 1st yesterday. That was at uh, $52.68 with 1.7 million shares. Got into it with 850,000 shares yesterday. Rolled over close below it and pulled back today. Uh, but uh, energy on the way up on this one was very light. Um, again, I'm not going to short before uh, Friday, but uh, I don't think anyway. But certainly uh, this one does look like it could test $44.67 fairly easily on that leg up. Apple, too, looks rather weak. Uh, Lion Technologies, this company makes the invisible braces, actually has found some fairly decent support. Uh, it's come down on about the same energy on the way up, so maybe a trading range. May 31st, $272.60 with 2.5 million shares. Um, you know, you, you, the highest volume you had was one4 million shares as it pierced it's back into the trading range now which means it could uh have a pretty nice range back up to 319.17 which is the june 10th high a lot of stocks surrounding the housing industry look like they could be in an abc down a.o smith the water heater company uh, has done basically a kind of a standard retracement uh, but on very light energy uh, it only needs about another 50 cents higher than yesterday's high to hit the 50% retracement. There's so many of these that uh, did this yesterday, and the housing business makes me think that there is something going on. Uh, to to Amphenol, uh, kind of a bellwether for SMHs. They make a lot of connectors that go into electronic products, and, uh, and kind of the Cadillac, I would say of those connectors, especially military, that kind of stuff. Gapped up uh, yesterday, holding that gap today. You were looking for something like two and a half million shares. We're up on about 500,000 shares so far. Avalara, company that I talked about uh, when it, after it IPO'd, never was able to find a good technical entry point to it. Has two really nice gaps uh, higher. I'm looking for a third to say that the end of it. And of course, uh, this is a very interesting company. I wish I just probably should have closed my eyes and bought it. Uh, but I'm not one of those guys. I don't like to gamble, especially with other people's money. Um, but they are a uh, transaction tax compliance corporation around the w uh, world, especially with more and more talk of tariffs. Uh, this company is probably going to have a very long and prosperous career Again, I wouldn't, uh, this is one of the stocks I don't think you want to short. Uh, and it may even take off on bad tax news or uh, tariff news. Uh, but at the same time, uh, the next gap up probably takes it to 100 bucks. So uh, if nothing bad happens, keep an eye on that one. It could be a big mover. Uh, Baker Hughes, I quote the numbers for the rig count every uh, Friday. They are part of General Electric or spent off General Electric. They got back up to this big down day of April 30th that had almost 11 million shares to the downside. Uh, you've been doing about half of that for the last week today, but uh, you're down a little bit more, but not much in the way of volume, less than 4 million shares right now. Another one in the housing sector is Builders First Choice, BLDR. Uh, let me find it here. Come on. There we go. Uh, and that uh, tested the previous high of 3 million shares on May 8th. 
at 1694. Uh, went above it yesterday, closed below it, uh, back into the trading range today. So there are some fairly bearish setups. Um, I'd like I'm not, I'm not shorting a $17 stock. I won't really short anything under a $30 stock. But uh, the energy up off the bottom is not all that bad, uh, problematic. BOTS, which is a uh, robotics and artificial intelligence ETF, if you've not been familiar with it, B-O-T-Z is a symbol on this one. Going back into the uh, gap down of May 7th that had 1.2 million shares, gapped up into it yesterday with 600,000 shares. Today you only have about 260,000 shares. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, Brooks Automation. Uh, we'll look at this when we come back. You got plenty of time to give me a call. Ask me a question. This is the day to do it. 877 the Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're back. Uh, turn this up so I can hear myself. Uh, and the first uh, stock of the day uh, is... Uh, Or at least we have a question on this. Uh, uh, v -I, -I, -E, I don't know how to pronounce it. V-I-A, V-I, VIA Solutions, maybe. Uh, these guys make a lot of test equipment for certification of networks, make sure that they're provisioned out correct, a lot of setup stuff. Um, very light volume test of the previous high at $14. 
He had 6 million shares back on May 3rd. Uh, today, you got uh, 1.6 million shares. Yesterday, you had 3 million shares. So the best you can look at is about half the volume. So kind of at the top end of the trading range. Uh, but that's about it. Eh. Via, via, I don't know. I hate people that name their companies something hard to pronounce. Almost as bad as these drug names that seem like someone had a fever dream and took a bunch of smack with a heroin chaser and then named the drug something. Uh, but uh, eh, I do digress. Uh, what else do we have? Um, well, that's that. We were talking about uh, uh, Brooks Automation when we left. True Austin, yeah. <laughs> Uh, da, da, da. and Brooks Automation, you know, basically back up to this resistance level that starts at about 40 bucks. So you got that. Um, is there anything else going on uh, in this? And it just looks like the whole market, which is kind of toppy, uh, but doesn't look like you've got a signal where a lot of these things failed. Coherent systems. Um, again, a lot of these things have come back up on very light energy. This is one. It basically came in and hit the gap down from May 7th yesterday with 400,000 shares on that uh, May 7th date. Hit it yesterday with 376,000. So, again, it looks like you've got maybe one more push to get higher in a lot of these before they give a, another signal. Carlisle Company. Uh, testing its 2 million share high of May 1st at 142. Uh, about a week ago at 142.30, closed back in, coming back up. But uh, you got about 139,000 shares today for the Carlisle companies coming up at that 142 area. That looks very light and probably a lot of people not talking about it, which is always pretty nice. Of course, the Dow Jones uh, testing around its highs had a nice uh, spike at 2. 68, 69 on June 21st. So you probably think we need to test and exceed that uh, in the next couple of days, maybe tomorrow, maybe Friday. If nothing happens, I think we could get into that with lighter volume in the next close. would probably paint a fairly decent picture of some tops. As we've talked about before, that double repo pattern kind of comes in exactly on the, on the Dow. Uh, and again, this is not one where you predict the future, but you wait for the future. And it worked very well last time. We talked about it on the air. Uh, but you're looking for something in the neighborhood of 10 to 15 days above a 3 by 3 displaced moving average or a 9-day moving average, handful of days underneath it, a couple of days above it, and then a close. the next close below that is generally where you get the destruction. So we don't have that close, but if we just go sideways till Friday, you could get into uh, that close. So keep an eye, at least on the Dow, for that. Uh, okay, let's clean that up a little bit. Um, let's see what else. FLIR, F-L-I-R, Forward Infrared Looking Radar. Actually, it's now just infrared. It's not really radar. Uh, but uh, this one's hitting this $55 level. Pretty hard uh, resistance. April 24th at 55.15, you had 3.5 million shares. Got into it yesterday with 800,000 shares back into the trading range. But again, generally without some kind of news, which you are not going to know it in advance, um, unless you're a fortune teller. And generally, I haven't met anybody that's a fortune teller that actually can give you a fortune. It kind of, isn't it, isn't it kind of interesting that fortune tellers are always asking for money? They're supposed to be tellers of fortune, but they don't have a fortune of their own. Uh, anyway, nice little top up there, but no volume. And again, uh, most of these stocks look like they could pull back one more time do the double repo before they fail. And again, you don't want to protect it. You want to wait for it uh, if you are thinking bearish here. Uh, FlowServe, another one, is this huge spike on May 3rd from, uh, yeah, my, May 3rd 
uh, what are we going to call this? Um, Four million shares to fifty-four dollars and sixteen cents. Got to fifty-three ninety-eight yesterday, but that was just with one million shares. A little reversal, but no volume on the downside. That's why I still suspect we have the ability to push up on Friday, or maybe on Monday, and then close lower. And at that point, I think you could say there is a much better bearish pattern that has developed. But I do not see it yet. I do see the light volume which is always the precursor. Everybody wants to say that volume instantly tells you whether the stock is going higher or lower. It is not. It is like the water temperature in the Gulf during hurricane season. It tells you when to be very wary of huge problems, but does not tell you exactly when or where that hurricane will hit. You have to be diligent to figure that out. Helix Energy Solutions. Uh, that is HLX double top, uh, $8.80 on April 23rd. That was with 3.3 million shares, got into it with 1 million shares yesterday. It generally means that you're not going to go a lot higher. Energy was uh, tepid from the May 31st low up to this high, but not horrible. Uh, to, to, to Gardner IT, again, a little spike back above uh, the uh, May 6th high. 161.85 with 850,000 shares. Got into it yesterday with uh, 269,000 shares. Today with just 146,000 shares. One of the few stocks, though, that looks like it's actually holding those highs. IVV, which is the uh, index fund, the iShares S&P, uh, testing its previous high. But again, the volume is not that bad. Energy is off on this right-hand leg back up to the top, but uh, not so horrible as uh, I would scream short this minute. Uh, but if that continues to uh, next week, could be extremely problem problematic. The uh, Russell iShares, IWO, uh, back into the gap down from uh, May 7th, that had 350,000 shares on the way down. Yesterday, you pierced it with 860. Uh, yeah, 896,000 shares, suggesting that you are going to at least see around 205 retested before this market rolls over. IWR, of course, is the Russell mid-cap, kind of the same kind of pattern. 3.5 million shares back on May 1st, 56.13. Yesterday, through with 1.3 million shares and back into the trading range you go. No soup for you. No soup. Back in a minute. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from 30000 to 75000 the interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com. 
educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD. Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866 476 7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And we have a question about First Solar, and uh, it is still holding the highs. Um, not a huge day out here. You had 1.7 million shares on the 27th, uh, but that was nothing compared to the 4.5 million shares on May 3rd. So you don't have that. You got a couple of days up here. Again, uh, a lot of those, uh, I got a couple of emails asking me about the Joe DiNapoli double repo pattern. We talk about it from time to time. I know we get new listeners all the time, uh, but the idea is that uh, either use the three by three displaced moving average or a nine day moving average. Both of them are fairly close uh, to each other. But the idea is to get something like 10 to 15, maybe use many 20 days uh, straight above that short term moving average to give you at least some kind of idea of a parabolic move in the market without a, a significant retrace. Uh, you get a couple of days down, you get a couple uh, days down underneath that. Then back above it, two, three, four, five days. And then the next uh, close underneath that, you pull the trigger. And a lot of times you'll find out that it literally opens up below that line and gets destroyed that entire day. That's what pretty much happened in the last cycle that we were short uh, and that we called for. But uh, they, it moved incredibly quickly. Uh, but you can look at it. LABU is another one. Uh, da, da. Would I buy Bitcoin? Now, I wouldn't have bought Bitcoin at the beginning. Now, you know, if I would have known it was going to $20,000, would have been fine. I would have just assumed that whatever I had it on would, like a disk or uh, a USB, would be roasted by the sun or hit by a meteor. I just didn't understand the idea of having zero backup uh, to a a system for holding my cash. And, uh, you know, if I could have bought it for three bucks, yeah, I may have put some decent cash in it and I would have cashed out high. I just, it always seems like a fraud. And the Beanie Babies or the Tulips, uh, I like my cash to have nuclear weapons behind it. Maybe that's it. I'm just a little bit more careful, I guess. Uh, I told you all about it. I didn't tell you to buy it. <laughs> uh, I think that's the difference. I did go through everything that was there uh, and the understanding of how it worked, uh, but I did not buy it. Yeah, Mr. John from Philadelphia did buy it. Congratulations for a huge win. Uh, okay, light, which is a uh, lumentum. Uh, this one, quite the reversal yesterday is it went and ran a lot of folks out. This is what you're looking for. And again, you haven't pierced the uh, up leg yet on this one uh, or come anywhere close uh, to hitting a upward support line. A lot of this stuff does look like it could take yet another week to even start to develop. This one not. Uh, these uh, folks make a lot of lasers. Uh, this is one of the ones I brought up, I think, was it last year, last fall? 
in a lot of them, uh, Docu, uh, Avila, uh, Light, uh, a lot of these uh, interesting stocks for the long term, but I wanted them to trade a while before I started sticking them in newsletters. Uh, to, to LVS, Las Vegas Sands, nice gap up yesterday, uh, but uh, gap was on very light volume compared to the down move back on the 17th of May, where it came down on 6.1 million shares. Got into it yesterday with 6 million shares, which is not all that bad. Uh, but it all happened on a gap. Today, you got less than 2 million shares so far. Do, 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 do. Let's see what else we have. Match Group. I've been waiting for this one, thinking that we could catch this one as a short opportunity, because I have a feeling this one is going to crack fairly hard. Um, again, uh, if you don't get the move that you want, um, that three by three displaced moving average is a good way to set your stop. And uh, a lot of times in the newsletter, that's exactly what I will do. Uh, and so if you don't get it, you, know, you didn't lose much out here. You could have, in fact, maybe made a little bit on the close under the three by three on the 19th. Uh, and uh, shorted it at 70 bucks and been out maybe yesterday at 68 or something. So may even made a little bit m of money. But you might consider that as a way of looking at where the risk reward was. Netgear, I've been waiting for this one to uh, bottom out. Uh, no sign yet on this, but interesting company in the fact that everybody will need new routers over the next five years with 5G. Uh, this one's kind of really just bottoming out and the fact that 5G hasn't really become something. It may take another year for this thing to get in gear, but uh, that's why they call it net gear. Give me a call at 877-927-6648. Email me at path at tfnn.com and uh, see what else we have. Uh, question about Intel. Have I changed my opinion on it? No. Um, you got kind of a nice bounce, but again, uh, more looks more like an ABC on the way down uh, with the super light energy off that May 23rd low. This one actually looks like one of the weakest of the SMHs that I can find. I think it does retest that $42.86 May 23rd low. Um, so that could be it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, in the tent, he was, uh, John was actually saying what he said, which is he was prepared to lose it all, which is generally not a newsletter uh, type trade that I put it in, although I will, but normally it has to be kind of an option play. Uh, to, 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 uh, one of the ones that kind of caught me, especially the way uh, energy is trading, uh, was Pacific Ethanol. Now, these guys make ethanol for gasoline. Uh, this thing has been perpetually down in this range. But if you're looking for a play maybe on energy uh, that is kind of a lottery ticket, this one looks kind of interesting. December 31st, it hit 76 cents with uh, 1.9 million shares. And it's got right back into that yesterday with about 75 cents. Um, energy's off on this last big move from 131 to 75 cents. But uh, if you were looking for something with a lot of bang for the buck uh, to hide out in over the uh, next few days, that one, very interesting, because if you see crude rise, you'll probably see this rise also uh, on a supply issue anyway. Uh, Rena Center, RCII. As we get ready to go to break. And the last segment coming up, uh, Renner Center. I'm pretty sure this is Renner Center, right? Uh, da, 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 da. I don't know why it just says, yeah. They've changed it. RCII. Okay. I need to change that. Um, Four million shares on $26.75. That's the May 8th high. Got into it today with 422,000 shares. So basically, you're above the previous high with a tenth of the volume. And uh, that kind of tells you, you know, if things were going south, the stock probably would be going much higher with a lot more energy. Um, but uh, just up on light volume, but just about everything is. We'll be back in a minute. We'll wrap up the week. Me, anyway. 
Uh, just a reminder, we'll be back next Tuesday, I think, or Wednesday. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And we're taking a look at Snap. The, uh, do, do you have to do that every time you say it? Snap. Anyway, uh, nice uh, move higher, up to 15 bucks. Uh, I tried to get this a couple times, never quite got it right uh, for the move higher, but it looked to me as a fairly decent play uh, against Facebook with all its legal issues. Um, not bad. You had a nice move higher on the 18th, uh, up on 56 and a half million shares. You're back into it with about 13 million shares. If you're looking again, I wouldn't probably buy it today. But if uh, everything uh, turns uh, copacetic by next Monday, $13.80 looks to me like a fairly decent risk reward setup. Uh, another question about Tesla. Uh, yesterday, you had to, in at least Europe, add a noisemaker to your car so you didn't accidentally back up over people with uh, electric vehicles, but mostly it was aimed at Teslas. Most of the other cars already had added something uh, that at least when you backed up, made some beeping sounds, and when you're going less than, I think it's 20 miles an hour, uh, also makes a sound so you don't sneak up and roll over somebody, which I guess is now a big issue. 
always reminds me of growing up in the Midwest where they had these little things that looked like uh, horns. They were tiny, maybe an inch and an inch and a half in diameter. You put them on your bumper and make a whistling sound that only the deer could hear. So they'd run off the road before you came down. But uh, eh, I don't know. I haven't seen those in a while. Not a big issue down here in Florida, I guess. Uh, anyway, Tesla's done nothing but go sideways. Uh, I suspect that this is going to hit 245, uh, maybe to 250. And at that point, it'll be a real head scratcher to find out whether or not you want to actually pull the trigger and go short again on it. My thought is it may take another three to six months to set up the next big leg down in Tesla. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. And we'll see you back here next Tuesday or Wednesday. Same bat channel, same bat time.